Was that Dad, Tube the, Buddy? Tube Buddy. Oh, okay. Hello, everybody. It's Danny Wanda back from Deep South Homestead. Well, Miss Wanda puts all this together right here. And you're talking so yeah, soft. Yeah, I'm talking so soft tonight. <clears throat> Danny's got to get his mojo. Yeah. All right, I got it done. Hello, okay. everybody. Now, see who we got in here. I see Hills Mills, first thing I see. Oh, yeah, I see him down at the bottom there, yeah. Uh, they said they have internet at the moment, but it could change. They have weather going through there? Yeah, everybody on the 33rd parallel. I've told everybody for <laughs> years this is going to be where all the weather's at. And it, it is pretty rough up there. Um, let's see. Oh, it just told me we were live. Oh. I was wondering. I've never was, had it do that before. Wow. Hey, I got a notification. We're, we're alive. I, we're, I didn't even sign yeah, up Yeah, we didn't even it. sign up for that. Yeah. Oh. oh. <coughs> uh, Aaron Cooley says, Cooley says, anyone have plums dropping? I guess they're thinning themselves. We have peaches doing that. Uh, and yes, it is a way of thinning themselves. Uh, thank you, guys. I just trimmed it up a little bit. That's all I did, just this evening. I didn't get a haircut. It needs it back here. This all needs it, but I can't trim that part. Oh. Um, it's going fast. Um, Y'all, I have to apologize for the live stream that we did Monday or, or Sunday. It was Sunday. Oh. It was Sunday. Yes, yes, yes. What happened was when we left out when we stopped having our live stream the other day and I get through I took and pulled the plug and I always do that with the webcam I pulled the webcam out so that it kills the sound and the picture in case when I shut this down it don't shut down because we've right. done that a we, time we've done that a, live yeah, we, yeah you have to watch what you say afterwards. and yeah. uh, so I always pull the webcam out automatically when I shut the live stream down I pull the webcam out well I didn't think much about it and my webcam is hooked into a little box that's hooked into a USB that runs my mouse a wireless mouse and so when I unplug that I my little box to this yeah. was plugged hooked to the webcam and I didn't know it and all of a sudden right after we got through I couldn't do nothing. I couldn't finish out anything I needed to do right. here. And Danny and I worked for what, nearly two hours? Yeah, for two hours. Changing to out batteries. Bad. We were trying to figure out what was wrong. Couldn't figure it out. Went to bed. Got up the next morning. And we needed to do that live. Well, I wasn't going to really do it live. I was going to hook it up with my computer. And I said, I don't know. I can't use my computer because my mouse won't work. And my computer itself... The board went out on it a year or so ago, and the only way I can do anything is with the mouse. And we worked with it again for a little while, and I said, look, we're going to have to use my phone and go live. And so, because I couldn't even edit on this. I have another computer, and I could have edited on it, but yeah. it would have took me a while figuring everything out. So I took my phone, and I said, here, we're going to go live. So he was looking at it, and I couldn't see the phone. I had it turned to him. And he didn't know that it was needed to be turned this way. Yeah. Hey, Chris. And uh, so the live stream's all sideways. It ain't normal. Yeah. And I'm going to take that one down because it was just for the Olight flashlights. And yeah. both our winners have done contact me. And both the Olights went out. And one winner contacted me today and said they already got it. Oh, wow. And the art failed already. Yeah, made it that, that, that was one. fast. So that was really fast. And... Uh, so I just apologize for that, but I found my webcam, I looked at it and found my piece and I realized that this don't work without the other piece. Okay, let's see here. Tracy, let's see, Tracy. Where do you see Tracy? Muckenfuss says, <laughs> question, my house is 88 degrees because my AC is out. Will my home canned items still be okay? Yeah, they'll still be fine. It's not going to hurt them. Um, not going to bother them at all. Yeah. Um, Christopher Kimball says the cultivator is working excellent. 
Who is Christopher Kimball? I don't have a clue. I've heard that name before. <laughs> and why would he be telling me the cultivator is working perfectly? I don't know. It sounds like a stranger that sounds we haven't like, seen in a while. Sounds like somebody I should know. Yeah. Yeah. He might uh, miss some cookies. He probably misses cookies. Yeah. I made pecan cookies. Yeah, pecan cookies. Oh, mm. my word. Well. He just missed out. Yeah, Christopher. Oh, man. We could use a Christopher right about now. I mean to tell you what, <laughs> that fella is He's something. He's a good guy. Uh, okay. Oh, the, I see somebody said something about they have a Vago bed coming. Yeah. Y'all, they having the, the beds like Danny and I have. I just got an email a while ago. The ones that are in the high tunnel, the... Nine and one. The nine and ones. No. Seventeen inches high. Are the nine and one or ten and ones? Nine and one. Nine and ones. Yeah. Okay. Nine the and nine and ones, ones ten inch, uh, seventeen inches high are on sale, guys. A hundred and fifty dollars. Hundred and fifty bucks. I don't you know. Can't. I don't know what they are normal. <laughs> that is a good. Well, no, 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 no. We. What was it? What they're they're like one eighty nine. I don't know. I just know it was one fifty one and some change. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't even know what they cost. So it said this weekend only. I okay. Can look right quick. Darlene Wright says, "Where did the grist mill end up?" Well, the grist mill. We got is, a video. We made. got a we got a video made. If we could just get it edited. Edited. The problem is we got to get it edited. We actually run it for a. Uh, yeah, they're regular one eighty nine. Yeah, they're one eighty nine. I thought so. Uh, we we got it set up and we actually did a test run with some old corn we had and we got everything adjusted and we got the we made a video while we was doing it. Uh we we had a few mishaps, I'll have to tell you. <laughs> um I I did a boo boo on it, so uh it took it. He was down to. I was down to the last just He said, Okay, I'm gonna be ready in a few minutes yeah. to test this out. Yeah. And I wasn't paying him a whole lot of attention, but he got a what was that prize bar? Yeah, I got. I was a little aggravated because something had happened, and I was a little bit aggravated. The piece wasn't exactly and, where he wanted it. Yeah, and, and he put a prize bar on. And I put a prize bar on. And I broke a big piece. I broke the most important piece off of the meal. No, it, not really. Well, yeah, it's a pretty important piece. And well, it didn't funk, mess with the functioning. It, yeah, but and I and I don't cast. I can cast iron weld. <laughs> but it's over at Pecan Grove, and I got no way over there to weld anything, you know. So we I took I, the meal to Pecan Grove. Yeah, and, and I wasn't going to bring it all the way back to Deep South and then try to set up out there. I'm having trouble with my eyes. I didn't want to try to weld it. So I, was, so I had to manufacture a piece to go on this mill so that it would actually work again. And it took me a day and a half extra to manufacture this thing so chris said bright and early monday morning with coffee and cookies ready <laughs> oh <laughs> we might grind i don't know we may grind meal we, if chris comes we might grind meal yeah, we some might. corn meal and we'll send him and jen some home for making some cornbread out yeah well and some grits to yeah try. yeah i know you're a grit eating boy so he better be better be um yeah, everybody's talking about cold weather. We got some temperature Monday morning supposed to be around 42, 43, something like that. Uh, not cold enough to hurt anything, but just cold enough to to feel good. You know what I'm saying? Um, somebody asked about Miss Lippy. Miss Lippy was uh, probably eating crawfish right about now, or she's finishing up and headed home. And then Miss Allison is at her daughter's visiting with her grandchildren, so both of them may not even be in here tonight. So yeah, we'll just have to pray that y'all all on your best behavior. Uh, Connie, yes, Connie, you can put the wood in the bottom of the bago bed. Just realize if you do, you could possibly be inviting termites or something like that in there if you live in an area where there is a termite problem. If you lived in the deep south where we live at. I know you'd have a problem. I didn't okay. bring my water in here. Somebody asked about the size bed that's on sale. It's called a 17-inch 9-in-1. You can make it nine different ways. We have ours, what, 2 and a half by 9? Uh, yeah, 2 and a half by 9, yes. I think. 
But you can make them different ways. Yeah, you can make them. That's why it's called a nine in one. You can make it nine different ways. They'll give you a sheet and show you the configurations of all nine different ways. Um, uh, Brandy Barger says, is tractor tires good for using for planting vegetables? You know, it's funny you mentioned that. My daddy, when I was a kid, go get took, water. yeah, here's my water. Uh, if I brought it in, I guess I did. I don't uh, know. My daddy would take a, a chainsaw and he would cut the tractor tires in ways and he would fold them inside outward and they would make the most beautiful beds. My mother would plant onions and uh, garlic and stuff like that in those tires. And we, strawberries, she grew some nice strawberries in it. Thank you, you dear. Usually leaves it on the tractor. Yeah. Okay. All right, Janice is asking for a link for the behaved, please. I'm not sure what she's wanting to know, but... <laughs> link for the behaved? Yeah, I'm not sure I'm what not that sure what is. that means, but there's no behaving on here, I don't guess. No, people do behave. Um, scorpions came in our wood chip pile that was dropped, dropped off. off. Ooh. Ooh, you must live out west. Um, That's not good. Well, I can't say that. When I worked up central, uh, just about 45 miles north of here, we had scorpions in the woods there where I was working at. So. Yeah, they are around. Uh, they're, so they're here. Um... We are hearing rumbling going on right now. Uh, we are about two hours from the coast of North Carolina. Sounds like military. Howard and Renee Robinson. Well, we're probably going to hear a lot more than that pretty soon. Let's put it that way. All right. What do I do with peach curl on my peach tree? Anything I can do to treat it? Uh, well, they make, uh, they make sprays for that. Uh, we don't ever worry about it, to be honest with you. Um, it's never been a massive problem for us to affect the fruit or anything here at Deep South. So I, I and I'm not going to spray my trees. I've never sprayed my trees with anything. Ah, Renata ordered her first Vigo bed and several plants. I've got some plants and a, a new little thing coming that I'm going to show y'all soon that they've got out. But, um, Miss Tambra asked, um, how we like the kids' Vigo beds. They're doing really good. I put them in front of Danny's, um, what we call it, a prepper shack that he's working yeah. on. Well, technically he should be working on, but he ain't working on. I ain't, well, I'm still on the high tone, guys. This high tone is about to whip me. I mean, it We're is. We're old. I'm old, and, and it's, <laughs> look, you may think this is crazy. Yesterday, it was 90.9 degrees. The temperature, not the heat index, the temperature Today, it was 89.8, you know, so I'm like, God, is August and July coming early this year? You know what I mean? But anyway, I, then we're going to go right back down to 42 and 43 degrees. I mean, that's 50 degree drop. Yeah. Um, let's see. A lot of people saying they have uh, scorpions everywhere. Texas, uh, Tennessee. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they are everywhere, yeah. Danny, I have been watching Porch Time for, from five years ago this week. Work was quiet. Laugh out loud. <laughs> was Sheila? Oh, it was Sheila, isn't it? Sheila Sheila, the 80s. Sheila 80s. Uh, you've been going back looking at five years ago. You should realize things that I said five years ago is just now coming to fruition. I mean, God gave me visions years ago, and... I'd love to tell you some of the visions I've had. Me and Wanda was sitting here the other day talking about them. And well, that one... She brought one back to my memory that I talked about uh, last year, I believe it was. It was either last year or the year before. I on can't Patreon. I remember. Yeah. We'd have to go back and see the date. But he, he told me, and I said, okay, stop. I want you to tell these people on Patreon what you've just seen. And so tell them... I don't know if you remember everything. I don't remember all the details. I just remember I had a vision. And in this vision, the United States, well, actually the whole world, but it was mainly the United States at that time. The I, was, I was seeing the U.S. that people had gotten so laxed in the way they viewed the human body that women were becoming irritated that they could not go without their tops. And 
it actually went before a hearing and it was passed that women could go topless in the U.S. And I know that happens in Venezuela and different places because I have friends who work in the oil fields down there. And they, I mean, they hire people like that to clean their houses and stuff. And I know it's quite common. So here in the U.S., I was like, man, this is, I told Wanda, I said, this is like freaky. I had this vision. I said, I can't ever picture this happening. But then this week we heard. Well, I, I saw, um, what was it? There was something going on now. There's going to be several states that are are this close to passing laws that women can go topless. Yeah. And so I don't know if you're in one of those states, and I don't know which states it is. I didn't. I meant to look that up and see. But y'all, it's getting bad. Yeah. Real bad. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, and I I could never figure the vision out. I saw one day. I said maybe it was just some freak thing, you know, I mean, you know, I don't, it's I don't believe everything that, that I actually ever experienced, but, but this is one that, uh, um, they said it's, a, it's legal in, in Toronto. Toronto for women to go to, really? Toronto, Ontario, I guess. Up uh, here north of the 45 parallel temps back in the low 30s. Well, I, we're not going that low. Well, Maybe. Michael, I, I said years ago that anything around the 45th parallel is going to be very difficult to grow. The 33rd is going to be bad weather. The 45th will be hard to grow in. <laughs> oh, Kansas Terry says, my husband likes that idea. Joe Mama said, not this woman. And Sianna said, not this. I'm not going to topless. Yeah, no. I mean, not me. but there are several states that's actually... Um, Put, fixing to put that out there, you know, and it's just, I was like, what? You yeah, know? it's only a matter of time, and to be honest with you, if you go into town, especially here in the deep south, uh, up north, y'all may not do it except in the summertime, but in the deep south, it's hot all the time, you can go in Walmart and see almost anything they might as well be naked. I'm going to just say that. Oh, they might as well. I was in Walmart one time fixing the, you know, back in this is horrible. I mean, I don't even know if I should even you tell should, this. You should be careful what you say. I should be very careful about how I say it. I was in Walmart. Just say it this way. Women do not need to wear... <laughs> Women do not need to wear bikinis in Walmart and go inside the cooler to get ice cream. You know? <laughs> I was getting a bucket of ice cream, or not a bucket, a little thing of ice cream uh, for my wife that passed away. This was before... This was before me and Wanda got married. Off of the bottom of a rack, I had the door open, you know, digging under there because she had cancer and she needed a certain ice cream that didn't have a bunch of junk in it. And I was digging through it and, and the door beside me opened and I looked up and here is a woman in a bikini in Walmart down in the cooler digging for ice cream. And I'm like, good Lord have mercy. I was like, I, I thought that, I mean, back before I was a kid, they had a sign outside the stores that said no shirts, no shoes, no service. You know? Yeah, it always said that. And the other was, you, you ought not to go out in public in uh, spandex and short top. Oh, my word. No, no, no. Spandex You should, might as well go naked. They I'm should have just a, say it. I don't care if you wear spandex all how, how day long. How did we get on this? I don't know either, but <laughs> and I, may, I know I got people they, and friends and other people. They should be a they, size limit on spandex anyway. Yeah. And they should be worn privately. If you privately. Don't wear it, wear long tops where yes. you don't see all the stuff that everybody has. Yes, yes, And yes. don't complain about men that wear spandex because they just as bad. Yes. Mm. Okay, I'm off my wagon. Okay. We shouldn't have got there. I don't know how we ended up there. We got to get off of that. We'll get in trouble for that. Probably well, we a lot probably of will. Comments. We'll probably get a lot of bad. Everybody's going to say, I wear spandex. I don't care. Wear a long top. Yeah. Just wear a long top. That's all I'm saying. No, I'll be honest with you, nothing surprises me. You know, I told y'all that the hand of God had, the Lord laid it on my heart that it had been lifted off of this nation and that we were been turned over to reprobate minds and I, I believe we're there. <laughs> I believe we're there. Yeah. Okay, so you, somebody else said those half tops make me nuts. Okay, if you're going to wear your underwear all day long or no underwear, we just say some of them don't wear no underwear yeah. because you can tell. Right. Okay. Never mind. Okay. 
Danny, well, how's the corn? How's yellow wax beans? Let's no, get on the corn yeah. and yellow wax beans. So, Danny, how's the corn? The corn is, a matter of fact, if I don't plow it Monday or Tuesday, it'll be too tall for me to lay it by. Let me put it that way. Okay, y'all. Because it is can't jumping. See my shirt, but let me get up where. Where is it? No. Oh, you're going other way. You're just other. left. Other way. <laughs> no, your other, your other left. <laughs> okay. This way. It says, make a joyful noise. And it's got a piano on it. Y'all know I love the piano. I haven't played a lot in many, many years. but well, I, I can show to. you my shirt, but I'd have to take my clothes off to do it. We ain't stripping on our we ain't, No, We, we just my, got through talking We about. just got through talking. You told me about a pastor who went through a thing. Who, oh, gosh. We don't want to get there. We don't want to get there a either. A pastor's conference yeah. in Missouri where they had a pole dancer, a striptease pole dancer. At a pastor's conference. Now, they had a pole dancer. And a sword swallower. And a sword swallower. Uh, he, he done both in Vegas. I, and he did it at this... I don't, I don't know. know. Never mind. I don't know. World's going crazy. World's went nuts. Okay. Okay, gardening without a bra, but with a large t-shirt. I'm Look, with you, Tamara. Tamara, Tamara, I don't care what anybody does on their own property. I, I think that you should have the freedom. If you want to go buck naked on your own property, that's your business. Garden in the nude. You can garden in the nude. Matter of fact, they have a nude gardening oh, I day. I kids ain't listening. You know, but... At least do it where the neighbors don't see you or where you're by yourself. You know what I mean? It's like... Put up a fence. Put a fence up. Plant trees. Do something, you know? I mean... Yeah. Uh, Grandma Prepper 2022 said her Danny corn is about knee high. Oh, man. Mine, yours? Uh, it's a little mine's long. about knee high. Are you knee high before July? I mean, you in one of them places yeah. where it's knee high before... Uh, that's pretty interesting. Oh... Uh, What's the best feed for black currants? I don't know. I ain't never had uh, I, I don't know. We don't raise currants down here where we live at. Uh, they, they, but it would be kind of like grapes, wouldn't it? I don't actually know. To be all, um, uh, let's see here. Yes, Brother Donnie's right. Most preachers are scared to preach on modesty. Fearful. Well, that's what actually happened in this uh, seminar. The preacher actually got upset because... Somebody called him out on it. Another preacher. Another preacher oh, called him out. Oh, they said Appalachia's Homestead did a video on it. Oh, did yeah. they? Okay. I, I, I don't watch Appalachia's Homestead, but... Um, 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 yeah. Do it when the bugs ain't biting, Grandma said. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's... Mm, never mind. Can you show... There us? is a YouTube... Author Illustrated BJ uh, says... <laughs> There is a YouTube channel with a naked female gardener. What? On YouTube? How do they get away with it? I can't even say certain things and they cut me off. Yeah, but if you're naked, they don't care. Well, I'm not going to be naked on YouTube. Now. Oh, but now, um, Neon, Neo Log wants you to show your t-shirt as long as you're not wearing spandex. I'm not wearing spandex, but i tell you what. <laughs> this, let me show you something. Ta -da! <laughs> don't do no. that. Um... His says, let me uh, see if I can do this. Mine says LCE. Life changing. Life changing event, which is what we're all fixing to face. We're all fixing to have a life changing event. Now Looks I, like we're going to have it on this live stream. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I'm having a life changing <laughs> event right now. <laughs> stripping on a live stream. That's anyway. so bad. But I designed this shirt several years ago. Yeah. And um, I don't even know if we have them available anymore. Um, maybe. Ah! No. I don't know if they're even available. I can't remember who, which, if I designed them where. Uh, I don't remember. But Danny don't even know this, but I am having a, a shirt designed. Oh, are you? Yeah. I have no, absolutely no clue. There's no telling what you'll have on it either. Your daughter, Carrie. What? Carrie's going to design it for us. Really? Yes. Well, I knew she was a designer, but uh, she's, she's also an a, architect. She's got a t-shirt thingy going and she was printing out t-shirts and I asked her could she make us one and she said she would so we're oh. gonna have a new a new design I don't know if she's gonna sell them or not but I think she's I asked her could she sell them what she gets them designed and I'm not gonna tell y'all what it is because I don't exactly know what she's gonna come up with <laughs> there is absolutely no clue I'm sure it will be great because the child is talented she is a young woman She'll always be my baby girl. I don't care. 
I knew that one was coming. <laughs> I kind of like the Tim McGraw song. She'll always be my baby girl, you know? All right, so where are we at? Uh... I can't see about my glasses now. That's a crazy thing. I went to the eye doctor. I had 20, 15, 20 vision. And now, since I started wearing glasses a little a little bit, my eyes have started going weird on me. Um, oh, okay. It's called the Naked Gardener. But I don't think she actually gardens all in the nude. I think I that's popped up before. And she wear it. It looks like she is maybe in thumbnails, but she's always got clothes on, I think. Okay. I think that's how she gets away with it. As long as you show the backside and you don't show anything, you okay. just insinuate Geoff Outdoors, Jeff Outdoors says, what's the best soil acidifier for blueberries? Uh, sulfur. Sulfur is probably the best acidifier that you're going to come up with is quick. If you want something quick. Now, if you don't want anything quick, you can mulch it with oak leaves, pine straw, whatever you want, stuff like that. But uh, but I, I use ammonium sulfate on mine because my soil here where we live at is, a, is normally about 5.5. Uh, <laughs> so I don't have to worry about it too much. Okay, we're going to read that one in a minute. But Dale Wheeler, he's the one that designed our pictures that we oh, use. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know who you're talking about. Okay, he said, your new coveralls look sharp. You notice these are, are new because these of are, the color? <laughs> these are new because of the color. Wanda actually told me. I could have a new pair out of the closet, you know. He was I wearing others out. The others, I just wore them slam out, you know. Oh. But they, but they don't wear good till they get like that, you know. And plus, if you gonna go out and get all nasty and dirty, you don't really want to wear your good ones, you know what I'm saying? I so mean, he's wearing them these, now. These are my them in. these are my Sunday go to meet no bras. Okay, now Glenn Green wants to know. Help! Help! Looks like southern border in my yard invasion of white caterpillar dude. Need, need to fix, fix it. Ah, uh, it's 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 the time of the year it is there, Glenn. Uh, it happens in the deep south here too. We get an infestation of army worms. Uh, we get infestations of the oak caterpillars and all that kind of stuff down here. As a matter of fact, we've already started seeing the oak caterpillars, and we've already had the little army worms hit one of our plants in our, or actually several of our plants in our higher tunnel over there. And so, yeah, it's just a. BT, Bercillus thuringiensis, is probably the organic way to get rid of them. Okay. What's the worst livestock emergency y'all ever had? Well, years ago, well, it's not a y'all, well, this would be one for me. Yeah, it'd be for me. Years and years ago, we had a dude move into the neighborhood where I was at, and uh, I had cows. And he got this bright idea he was going to get him a bull. Well, his bull ended up in my yard, in my field. And I put him in the corral, and I called him and told him, I said, look, you need to come get your bull. He goes, well, I don't have a way to haul him over to my house. And I said, your house is like 150 yards from my driveway. And I told him, I said, well, first, I'll, t I'll, I'll bring him over there with my trailer. I said, let's go look and see where he got out. Well, we went up there, and the dude didn't even run his wire up to the building where he was at. He left about a foot gap. And he said, well, I didn't think he'd go through that foot gap. Mm. I said, dude, you don't need a bull, okay? I said, but this is the bottom line. I'll bring your bull over there. Don't worry about it. I went to load this bull up, and he got up in the chute and messed around and turned around and ran over me and got on top of me and was standing on me, and I was up under this animal. <laughs> Inside the chute, all I could see was my life being flashed before me, him stomping me to death in that chute. And by the grace of God, I don't know how I did it, but I kicked that animal up in the air and got him off of me. And that's probably the worst animal experience, other than the hog. Remember I had the hog? Try to come over the Yeah, I had a hog, and we actually had that on a video, didn't we? Yeah. We got a video of a hog about a 300 pound hog trying to come over a fence on Daddy's top of me and I'm trying to hold him up and I'm trying to push this animal you know to get him up off of me and I successfully did it but scared the heck out of me and the only thing I guess since we've been married because I didn't have a lot of animals beforehand well we had a few off and on but not many would be when our baby goat was having her baby. Yeah. The first one, Danny's goat, 
had hers with no problems, but when mine started having it, she had some issues. Right. And since I'd had three children at home and I knew enough about home births, I managed to massage and help her and she managed to have the baby and both of them were fine. There were no big deals, right. but it was a little bit stressful. That was probably one of the most stressful times, I guess, that I've had. And uh, she was fine. The baby was fine. We had nice goats. Um, Danny and I don't have a whole lot of... We don't have a lot of animal tragedies now, or, or animal you know, well, things. Back, possum got into my chickens. Oh, yeah. We had a possum get into chickens. Um, yeah. That was about, what, four or five months ago. Of course, I eradicated him. Yeah. But since I've been here Skunks. 10 years, we have not had anything get into our chickens till then. Right. We had one night something tried about five years ago. Yep. And not nothing since then. Nothing um, since then. I mean, when you eradicate... All, all our cows have their babies fine and dandy. We don't have medical emergencies with them. Uh, we've not had any issues with none of the mamas over, what, five or six years we've no. had cows? No. Uh, none of the babies. God no, has been good to us. None of them have gotten sick. Um, rabbits, we've had no issues with our rabbits. No. Um, what else? We uh, had turkeys for a while. Didn't really have any issues no with, problem the with the turkeys. No problem with the turkeys. No. We've... We, raised pigs, no problem with the pigs. The pigs had their babies all on there. I even had a wild pig, and I and I tamed it. And uh, yeah, we have videos on Facebook. Yeah, on we had videos about how to tame a wild hog. And that was way before we started YouTube. Yeah. What else? We had goats, and our goats, like I said, they did all did good except that one. Yeah. She had she had a little bit of trouble with her her first baby. Okay, somebody wants to know what brand overalls I'm wearing. These are Roundhouse. That's the only ones that I wear are Roundhouse. They're, and they're American made. American made overalls. And make sure you go to Roundhouse.com. Now you can get them through secondhand companies that are selling these things, but you're gonna pay more. Roundhouse is still about fifty dollars for the overalls. Yeah. But still, they're worth it. They're well can, worth it. You can get them in the dark, the faded out. Zipper flies, button, button flies. flies. You can get them in different weights. Uh, yeah. They got heavy weight for winter, lightweight for summer. Uh, Howard wants to know, Howard and Renee wants to know, I, I know you've told us before, but when should I put ammonia or triple 13 on our corn? Uh, I do mine, or I try to, depending on the weather. I try to do it when it's about 8 inches tall, and then again when it's about 12 to 14 inches tall, and then I use uh, ammonia when I lay it by mixed with triple 13. All right, so um, do y'all do this between the two of you, all the livestock? Yes. Yes. We don't have any help with anything. We, we do have, everything, whether it's building, gardening, canning. We, yeah, we don't have livestock. Uh, a lot of people think we have a lot of help, but we don't. We no. never have had help. Um, we just manage what we have and go our merry way. What's your advice on getting rid of venomous snakes? <laughs> I just... <laughs> it depends on where I'm at when I find one of them. Now, you can use mothballs. Or you can use lime. Uh, hydrated lime is probably the safest way to get rid of them. Uh, you can sprinkle it all up under your house if you have a house up off the ground or where, wherever you live at. Hydrated lime is probably one of the quickest ways to get rid of them. Uh, some people use mothballs. I just use whatever I have in my hand at the moment when I see one of them. You know, if I have a stick or, or a gun or a shovel hey, or a hoe. Last year at Pecan Grove, the man killed a snake in the dark with a stick. In the pond. In the pond. I was. I went out in the water after him. I asked me where I was at. Miss Wonder, I thought she was filming this, and I jumped out in the water with this moccasin in the dark. I was gonna kill him with a stick, and I turned around, and thought she was filming, and I looked, and she was running up the hill, getting in the ranger. I was in the ranger. My feet were up in the ranger. I was not nowhere near to get a snake around me, mm -hmm. and I did film after afterward a little bit, but not while he was beating a snake over the head with a stick in the water. I turned around. I'm like. Where are you going? I said, I'm the one down here in the water with the snake. What you doing running up the hill, girl? And I said, you going to stay down there because I ain't going to be near no snake. Oh, um, man, 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 man. 
Uh, what do you fertilize your tomatoes with? I fertilize my tomatoes with calcium nitrate. Uh, calcium nitrate, I found, is probably about the best thing that works for me, on our soil type anyway. Have y'all ever found tiny worms in your blackberries? Uh, no, I can't say we've ever found any tiny black worms in our blackberries. We always eat the blackberries. I don't know if they're in there. We just ate them. I don't, I don't guess. I mean... Um... Wild Turkey said her grandmother would chop them to pieces with a hoe. Miss Wanda Chopper, that woman could cut some snake up with something now. <laughs> Danny was taking a bath here one night. This was what? We had just started YouTube. We haven't been doing YouTube long. Right. Yet. And so I had just figured out that I could take camera and run, do stuff. I had laid the camera down in here and I went outside and I was going to feed my chickens and it was almost dark and he went to take a bath. And I... He heard me come back in, and he heard me go out again. So he hurried up, got his bath, and he comes back out, and he says, what are you doing? And I said, I just killed a snake. He said, by yourself? Because I'd never killed one right. before. And I said, yeah. And I had a shovel in my hand and a camera in the other hand, and I was trying to video because the snake, when I opened my chicken door, it was up over the other door where my biddies were. I mean, laying up over the door. And when I saw it, I shut the door back. And I'm like, okay, what can I kill it with? And I said, there's a shovel in that building. So I opened the door back and watched the snake and grabbed my shovel. And I was going to reach up and chop him. And he, he disappeared. And I'm like, crap. So I had the shovel in my hand. And I stepped back out. And he had went outside the pen. So I tried chopping at him at the top of the building. And he fell to the ground, and I jumped back, and I was, like, from a distance, chopping him. And when Danny come out, and I was trying to film it while I was chopping him, he come out, he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm killing a snake. He said, there's five pieces there. Couldn't you stop yeah, it so one? Couldn't you stop it one piece? You got him into five pieces there. I said, he's going to be dead when I get through with him. I said, he's not killing my animals. Okay, my new Tennessee home says, seriously, can I use 3300 on my corn? Uh, as a matter of fact, we have a video coming up one day this week uh, on when I fertilized my corn, and 3300 is what I used on mm -hmm. my corn at the time. And I mean, I poured it to it. I mean, I put that on... one's already up. Wait. Uh, is it already up? No, you hadn't done the ammonia. Yeah, you, I did. You didn't I... fertilize, didn't you? No, I was ammonia. We put that up last week on Pecan Grove. Did we put that one up already? I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because remember the you first remember the first bag. Time. The first bag was a little damp, and I said it didn't look like it was putting it out like it should have. And the second bag. It, that was last week on Pecan Grove. Okay, then we already have a video up on <laughs> Pecan Grove uh, using thirty three zero zero, and I mean I put one hundred and fifty pounds of it on my corn, and I'm telling you, the stuff. Looks like you shot it up with crack cocaine or something. Other. I mean, that stuff is like crazy. Okay. Um, so I picked um, Mayhaw's last week. And a lot of people want to know what a Mayhaw is. It look, it's called a Hawthorne Berry. I th Hawthorne? Isn't that yeah, right? Yeah, Hawthorne Berry, yeah. Um, in some places, but it's called a Mayhaw here. In the south, it's called a Mayhaw. And it looks like a crab apple. It's They're little. They're not real big. And they're red, and they smell like a crab apple when you're cooking them down. And I have a video coming up, maybe Monday, of the Mayha jelly with a twist. Okay, Joella Leonard says, Danny, my onions are about five to six inches high. I side dress them with calcium nitrate. Will I need to fertilize them anytime soon again? I use calcium nitrate about once every two weeks on my onions. Uh, so yes, you will. You'll need to do it again. All right. Uh, we got an O light winner, Margie. Mar uh, Margie. Yeah, Steven. we had two winners. Um, we did a video announcing who the two winners were the other day, didn't we? Yeah, we had yeah. to because I didn't send the O lights out, and one of them's done got it. <clears throat> okay, here we got somebody <laughs> three. 3B Homestead says, do you have any advice for a homesteading YouTube channel starting out? Thank you, Danny and Wanda. 
uh, yeah, if, you, if you're doing it for a living, change your occupation. <laughs> if you're doing it to make money, change your occupation. If, if you doing you don't, it for fun? If you're doing it for fun, hey, get after it. Uh, if, you, if you're doing it because you feel like you need to, change what you need to do. Uh, I'm not trying to be critical. It's, it's a lot. It's, it's, it's a lot of hard work. Yeah. Well, I mean, Wanda and I sit out, sit down often and talk about how many hours. I mean, we put in so many hours a week trying to make videos, trying to uh, film stuff. Hi. I mean, I tell Wanda all the time. Look, this is the bottom line. Get away from me with that camera because <laughs> I can get this done ten times faster if you leave me in that alone with that camera. You know because. You have to make sure you shoot every clip. You have to make sure you get it from the right angle. The sun's got to be right. The, the shade's got to be right. I worry about that lots of times and now. Then you got to make sure the person sees exactly what you're doing, step by step. And I'm a, I'm a common sense kind of person. And Wanda all the time tells me, uh, you need to reshow that because, I mean, I said, look, it's just common sense. And she says, well, <laughs> most people don't have any common sense. And, <laughs> And I'm like, oh my God, Wanda, please let me just get this done, you know? He wants to just sit and, do, if I could just video him working and him never have to explain or do anything and you just watch him, that'd be one thing. But when I say stop, now I'll thread that again and show them how he says, it's just simply threading something. I said, no, because I didn't see what he was doing and I didn't understand why he was doing something. I make him do it again because and explain it because... I'm the person that's never done most of that. So right. I'm looking at it like y'all would. Why did you do that? Why? And when I asked him, he goes, what do you mean, why? <laughs> yeah. Okay. But no, it is I mean, fun to make videos. It, it, it's, it's fun to make the videos. And it and editing it can be fun once you figure it out. It's a pain in the butt if you don't know how to edit. It took me a while to get the hang of it. Danny edited to start with, and then when he didn't have time, I started yeah. It took me a while, and then you've got, on top of that, your questions, people asking stuff all the time, mm -hmm. keeping up with emails and things like that. It is a lot of work, but when we started, YouTube didn't have the thresholds they have right. now. Yeah. When we started, we could put up videos, and within a month, we made our first hundred bucks. I mean, that's how easy it was for us back when we started. Yeah. And plus we had friends that we didn't even know what the people at the time, but we had two people give us a shout out and that's back when they were doing shout outs. Yeah. And they gave us shout outs within the first six weeks of us doing this. And then Big Family Homestead, the second month, did a interview with us. Yeah. So those three, it was Dirt Patch Heaven, Life and Farmland, and then Big Family Homestead gave us shout outs and an interview yeah. that threw us into seeing more people real quickly when you start out and nobody's really helping you now because nobody helps anybody do anything right hardly. we will be forever indebted to those people yeah i mean they they did they did really and bless us now you've got how four thousand watch hours and, yeah there's uh, all kinds of rules a thousand right? subscribers it took a while for us to get to a thousand and then you know yeah. All this. So it, it takes a little while. You're looking at a good while. So. Okay. Kenneth Durham says, Danny, does the ribbon across your corn keep the deer out? That's a, a yeah. It's actually there for several reasons. One, it keeps squirrels out. Second, it keeps the crows from pecking your corn up. Third, it irritates deer because it's constantly moving in the wind out there. So it does help keep the deer out. Now, we have had deer walk under the tape on the ends and the edges. Uh, occasionally they will, but usually after a while, uh, it gets to be annoying to them because they, they, they can't jump one ribbon to the next ribbon because it kind of messes with them. If you put them like six to ten feet apart, uh, they it, it disturbs their, their eyesight with them sitting there constantly blowing in the wind. So it, uh, yes, it does. In, in some ways, it does help. All right. Double A said, if I could fly the drone over you without telling you I could stand far away and get everything. I don't know how to drive that thing. The only Danny's drove it some. Yeah, I've used I, it I, some. Or fly, flown it, whatever you call it. And my son, I, I've not touched a drone because it would be in a heat pile somewhere because I yeah. couldn't keep it. It'd fall. 
Uh, can you please recommend some inexpensive ways to get started with a raised bed garden for someone just starting out? That's Tammy. Oh, an, in, an inexpensive way. Well, it depends on if you have land. It depends on if you're in a subdivision. I mean, it depends on... There's a lot of factors in that. I mean, uh, when we first started out, I drug old dead logs up here. Mm -hmm. And I took a chainsaw and cut them into lengths. And we, we just stacked dead logs around and, and put dirt in between them. And, and dirt from the property. Dirt from the property. Uh, and then we learned if we pushed trash piles clear in our land, we didn't burn the trash piles. We just piled them up and let them rot down. Because here in our humid climate, a trash pile will rot in one year. And then we would go back in and we would dig that soil up from those rotted trash piles. It would be full of earthworms and, I mean, just living microorganisms. And we'd put that in our raised beds. And we still do that today because we learned from it. Uh, and our gardens began to just flourish after that. But uh, if you're in a, oh man, if you're inside a, a subdivision or something She's like that. She's in a large fenced in backyard. You might try a kitty swimming pool and cut the bottom out of it and just use the rim around the edges of it. Or, oh, uh, cattle, you... cattle mineral tubs is probably yeah. the... If you can if find she a, has no access to that, go five on Amazon. Gallon you, can, buckets. You, can, you can do it in five gallon buckets. You um, can go on Amazon and order the 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 tubs for, on Amazon for like fifteen dollars a piece or something like that. But five gallon and buckets are like five bucks. Five gallons are like, but you, a mineral tub you can get a lot more in it. Yeah, uh, true. A five gallon bucket you can can be done. Yeah. But it's a little bit, or or you can try concrete blocks. Depends on if you're in an Maybe. HOA or anything like that that's going to prevent you from. You know, it's got to be pretty. To if you got to have it pretty. Yeah. But any kind of containers that you can find that you can put dirt in and grow something is worth it. Uh, Some Tina, people say, say cardboard boxes take yeah. the bottom out. Tina Summer says, do you still use the bone sauce? Yes, we still use the bone sauce. We put it around all of our gardens. Uh, and this year so far we've had zero deer problems. Yeah, I put some out, what, last month? Yeah. Went around the whole deer field, I mean cornfield. And <clears throat> we were, and I did the 60-foot um, raised bed garden, too. I went around yeah. both of them with the bone sauce, just because. Oh, uh, let's see here. Danny, any tips? This is Chris Tharp. Any, any tips on planting onions? Well, it depends on where you live at in the country. First of all, you got long day onions, you got day neutral onions, and then you have short day onions. That depends on where you live at. You can go over to Dixondale, uh, and they'll have a map there that you can go by. And then if you're planting uh, short day onions like we do here in the Deep South, they need to be planted in November in order to. But now to have, we did do now some we have last we year. have planted in uh, January in February, and we have made some decent bulbs, but they do better if we plant in November. And we got some, what, last week, the week before? We, we picked up some about a week ago that the company... We're going to see how they did. They just gave them to us because they were in such bad shape, and we're, we put them out. We'll see how they do. I, I don't really look for them to do a lot, but they might. All right. Um, plastic totes. Some people are saying yes. you can get them from garage sales. Um, if you have to buy them new, you can get them yeah. at the dollar store. Sometimes the dollar store has just flower pot type things you could plant something in. Um, uh, they're saying y'all hit the like button. If you have the, have it where you can. Yeah. Uh, Cause we don't have, we've got a few moderators, but Lippy and Allison are out tonight and they're the ones that's always giving y'all links and everything. So. Okay, Linda Greenwell says, what are you saying? Bone saw, bone sauce, bone sauce, S-A-U-C-E. We get ours from a, a permapastures home, say, a permapastures farm. Uh, Billy and his family make it. They have a YouTube channel. They make the bone sauce there. Uh, we get ours from him. And uh, it has worked fantastic for several years now. I can't complain. Yeah, um, now we do have a lot of deer, and so we've been really 
you know, kind yeah. of holding our breath, but so far, <laughs> but everything we do, that's, it's just not the bone sauce now. We, we're doing a lot to try and keep them out. We even put dog monitor, uh, monitors up that go, yeah. is a barking dog and a gun firing, so... And it gets us all at times. Yeah, they're, they're right. Go, you can go to bakeries and stuff like that because then you get food grade buckets. That's what you have to make sure of when you get a bucket that you get a food grade bucket. Yeah. Cedar planks. Uh, uh, it's according to what you can afford to, yeah. to do and how much. Uh, even if you uh, want um, like the vertical planters, they run the uh, green yeah. stalks on sale. You can check those off and on. Um you can plant the the regular ones. I think you can plant five times five. Is it twenty five or five times six? It's twenty five or thirty plants in them. I done forgot. I and I then have the no ones clue. with the smaller pockets have an extra um, couple of things, so you can plant thirty five plants. I think so. That's a lot of plants in one green stalk. Uh, Future Folk says, when you harvest onions in the south, planted back in October, November, they are building up the R. Curious, she have seed pods. Uh, we usually harvest ours, uh, what do we do ours? Some um, usually... Usually right about now. Right about we, now. But we, we were late with we getting were, them in and yeah. they looked pitiful. Yeah, usually, so, usually about now we're, we're getting them out of the ground. But you re you remember now you got to ring those onions. You got to pull the dirt away from them in order for that bulb to expand. And, and that's when what they we're... flop over, that's when you. Yeah. And tractor supply grow bags. That's another thing. They're yeah. not that expensive. Tractor supply has those. Um, so there there's all kinds of things that you can find that according to your budget. Maria Hyde said fish emulsion around squash to prevent squash bugs. We use fish emulsion around ours. We use uh, Dr. Earth's Golden Bloom or Bloom. Golden Bloom. Golden Bloom, uh, liquid phosphorus, stinks like all get out. Or you can plant radishes in between your squash and let them go to seed. Do not pull them up. Leave them in there. And that repels squash bugs also. All right, Will Be Cool says, do you want a shell of Alabama apple tree? He bought two of them in Dothan. I've never heard uh, of that. I've never heard of shell of Alabama apple tree. Uh, um, I would be willing to try one of them. Do they need a certain pollinator? Yeah, I think say, do they need a particular pollinator? Because the crab apples here have already, all the apple trees here have already pollinated. It depends on when they pollinate. Uh because we have crab apples planted and uh, stuff like that, so that we have, you know, pollinators for them. Or I've never heard of an apple tree being a self-pollinating apple tree, unless you do like I do and you graft them together, where they will self-pollinate. Um, Hat Bam Seven, or Hat, yeah, Hat Barn Seven says, "Do you have to cover your onions through the winter?" No, we do not cover our onions in the winter time. All right. Uh, somebody says, how do you deal with ticks where you live? They're horrible here in Pennsylvania. We don't have any ticks here so far. Um, Danny and I have not had any issues. We stay in the woods all the time. Last we... year at Pecan Grove, I mean, we were roaming those woods for the first, what, six, eight months? Yeah, we was in the woods and all the time. And neither one of us ever got a tick at all. We, we've and not, it's pine straw. <laughs> yeah, we've not had ticks, period. I mean... God's been good to us. There's Mimsy. Uh, somebody, uh, Mimsy's saying she, you could split open a bag yes. of potting soil. My Dad parents, parents, my parents used to do that. They used to go to town and buy the potting soil, and they would cut a split right down the middle of it, lay it on the ground, and cut a split down it, and plant their plants right in it. And they'd punch some holes in the bottom of it so it wouldn't fill up with water and hold it, but they'd punch holes all the way through it into the bottom, and they just... I mean, they they watered them and grew tomatoes, and of course you have to stake the tomatoes because they'd fall over. But and peppers, my dad grew peppers in them and stuff like that worked great. Uh, Cindy at Simply Backwoods said that you could use large dog food or chicken feed bags and five gallon buckets or whatever. Yeah, but you can grow a lot of things. Like that, uh, you you have to get it inventive. 
Seed bags. Yeah. Feed bags. Yeah. All right. Uh, it jumped. It jumped on us here. I don't even know. Every what. year, white flies attack my sweet potato vines. How do I get rid of them? Uh, Nadia, that's a good question because we we have never ever ever found a successful way to get rid of white flies other than a harsh chemical, and we're not going to use a harsh chemical. I mean, we do the best that we can do. You know, we use sticky traps, uh, these yellow sticky traps and stuff like that, and it does seem to help. I will say that. Uh, there, a lot of them are saying about the ticks. They have ticks everywhere. Uh, what do you think about Gray Man? I'm not sure. I don't know what Gray Man is. Um, a lot of people saying ticks are already bad. Uh, Janine Kindlin says, can you grow tomatoes in an upside down hanging bucket? Yes, you can. I have seen it done. Uh, my neighbor done it one time. I know it works because I've seen him do it. Um, let's see. It, it messes up. It, when it jumps, I can't read that fast. Do your onion greens die back in February frost? And how do you keep frost from damaging onion tops? Uh, no, ours don't die back from a frost. Now, I have seen ours die back from a hard freeze. I've seen it when it got down to like 15 degrees here one time. Uh, our onions died back, but they came right back out. We didn't mess with them. Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, any good tips on getting rid of tons of mice? I have used traps, but wouldn't mind a deterrent. Uh, Cindy, we just, uh... We just use, we use poison. I'm not going to lie to you. We use the, uh, the bars, the real hard bars of poison. And, uh, it, it works great. I mean, we don't have any other animals to be concerned about. So we use the bars of poison. I mean, I, I, a mouse is the most destructible thing in the world. And I do not play with them. Yeah. We had a woodshed close to, well, it was up where we kept chickens recently. But when Danny and I, no, when we first married, well, that was a woodshed, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was a woodshed, and then we, when we put chickens on the other side, we turned all of it into a chicken pen. So yeah. we had to move the wood out from under there, and some of that wood had been there three or four years, right? Yeah. Y'all talking about big rats. Not mice, rats. Long rats. He had his gun shooting them darn things. I was shooting them with a gun. They were so big. And yep. I, how many? 10 or 12? I got like 10 or 12 of them out of that wood pile. In yeah. a wood pile? Yeah. So y'all better be careful around your wood piles. Aaron Cooley says, Shell Apple is from South Alabama. Blooms with Anna and Ayn Shamir. If it blooms with the Anna and the Ayn Shamir, then it will make apples here. Yeah. Yeah. That's good to know. <laughs> hey, Sue says, Dad calls those green bars candy for his rats. Yep. Uh, yep, they love it. Uh, uh, let's see here. Debbie says, we need help with earwigs. Earwigs is something we have them every now and then. But chickens and, uh, you know, if you've got a good supply of birds on your property, they usually keep earwigs pretty much in intact i mean bluebirds stuff like that they eat those earwigs like crazy uh jay luther says aloha from the big island of hawaii eating strawberry papaya and t tahitian lime i just picked from my yard oh my i hope that the papaya you're eating my brother is not genetically modified i would love to have a good papaya because it's most not genetically modified yep, and all that most stuff. Most all oh, papaya I now is genetically are. modified. And I, oh man, papaya is so good, but we don't eat it no more because 99% of it is genetically modified. Yeah, and with him living in Hawaii, I it's, mean, that temperature is like perfect growing like season all perfect. year long. Yeah. We have pineapples. And I envy y'all y'all's pineapples because we only have a few and we get oh, three yeah. or four pineapples a year oh to have pineapples year round oh that would be amazing yes um gosh it's nine o'clock already it is oh my word um, uh, uh, trying to see is 
Uh, let's see. I mean, it's gone so fast. Hold on. Um, Have y'all started harvesting green beans or yellow wax beans? They're blooming. They're blooming and got little beans about this long on them. I told uh, Danny today we will be grilling some beans in a week. I hope. I've got tomatoes. We got to do an update. No, it's not tomatoes. We've got tomatoes that are small. Yeah, but we we've got, got we got big old bell peppers. And yep. I've got little on my kitchen minis. I've got one little pepper on it. I'm waiting on it to turn orange because it's, it's an orange pepper. We've got tomatoes about the size of my thumb just hanging on my kitchen minis. Uh, my tomato that's a uh, cherry tomato is yeah. hanging in tomatoes. Um, what else we got going on? Eggplants blooming. Everything's everything's doing really good. The uh, cauliflower, I noticed a couple of them's got a little head started in them. Okay. Look, when it got to be look, this is this was so disappointing to me. Uh, yesterday, when it got to be ninety point nine degrees, I walked out to my high tunnel and looked, and all my cauliflower and everything, the plants, the radishes, everything was laying flat on the ground. That heat literally knocked them down and had them flat on the ground. I was sick to my stomach. Uh, we don't have a top on it. We don't have a shade cloth to block that sun off of everything. I just threw my hands up in the air and I said, you know what? If it makes, it makes. If it don't, it don't. Ain't nothing I can do about it right now. I'm working my butt off trying to get this thing done. And it's, we got to get a shade cloth. Up. It's taking forever. Will Be Cool said he bought an Arctic Frost Satsuma at Alexander's Hardware and went by Jack's and it could have got it for $5 less. We bought our Arctic Frost. We bought from ours Alexander's. from Alexander's also. Yep. Ours are doing pretty good. Aren't ours they? are doing good. Yeah. Yeah, they're doing real good. Any thoughts on the white sweet potatoes? Supposed to be less sweet and more like a regular potato flavor. Trying them along with Mr. Al's potatoes this year. You still yeah, got Mr. Al's potatoes? The, uh, the white sweet potatoes, I love them. They're great for uh, like making fries and stuff like that. They are not as uh, they're not as sweet as the uh, red ones are, uh, but to me, they taste just as good as the red ones. It depends on how we we use them for stir fry. If you cut them up into pieces and use them as stir fry, take the skin off of them, they work really, really good. Okay, Double A said that uh, we inspired him with the pineapples and he wants to know, can we tell him when we see and pick ours? We left ours until they turned. We leave ours until they turn yellow, yellow, yellow. Don't leave them until they get mushy. <laughs> yeah, don't leave them until they get mushy. But now. when they start turning, leave them another two or three days and then take it off. Now, we yep. have taken one out in the yard. The first one we grew out in the yard, yep. we took it off. It had just twinges of yellow. Yeah. And we let it ripen in the house, and it still tasted good. <laughs> it's still good. But if you let them turn completely yellow on the plant before... They're you, sweeter. Usually, you'll know when they're ready. You can take your hand and just move it just a little bit on the plant when it gets yellow, and it just, it just comes right off. Do mashed potatoes do good in the harvest freeze dryer? Uh, I don't remember we, if I did mashed potatoes. I don't know if we've done I? mashed potatoes in there or not. I don't know. I can't remember if I did any mashed potatoes. Because instant potatoes are just so easy to pick up, I don't think I did any mashed potatoes. Um, I did cook us some, um, what was it? Was it today or yesterday? I don't lost track. It was yesterday. Um... Freeze-dried yeah. squash, zucchini, and onions. And all I did was I had cut them up in pieces and freeze-dried them and put them in the bag. And so I took some out yesterday because we haven't had any in a while. Right. And all I did was put some water over in a boiler and let them sit in it for a little while. They absorbed that, so I put more water. And I just kind of boiled them a little bit and seasoned them. And Danny's going, oh, I've not had squash in a while. This tastes so good. <laughs> yeah, it was good. Uh, Catherine Elkins says, Danny, do I trim onions to help them grow? Uh, no, you don't trim an onion to help it grow. Uh, the only time I trim an onion is if the, 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 limb, the leaves on it get broke down and they, they're just laying all in the dirt, then I'll trim them. Cul-de-sac said their, her ripe mini tomato tasted like ketchup and didn't like it. I don't know yet. We haven't had a now, ripe I've had one yet. Three cucumbers off my mini cucumber, and I love them. 
um, the the cucumbers are crunchy and I, they're they're just good. The a wonderful taste. So I'm anxious for the tomatoes. I've got two different types. Somebody keeps asking about Gray Man. I don't know who Gray Man is. What kind of cucumber do y'all? Uh, Gray Man's a YouTube channel. Uh, what kind of cucumbers do y'all grow? We usually do the straight eights. No, um, I did. Uh, and then we do the uh, national pickling. national pickling. Uh, last year we done a slicing one. Uh, we we did done the, the uh, Biet alpha. alpha Alpha Bietz. Biet Alpha. Biet Alphas. Now those were good cucumbers um, for eating. Um, I, I we got, did the divas. Yeah, I didn't like the divas. We didn't like the divas. That's a, a path. How do they say parthenogenic or however they say that? <laughs> I don't know how they say. Uh, parthenocarpic. I can't. I guess I can't remember how they say that. Yeah, I, I don't either. Uh, anyway. Uh, Delta uh, Prepper said he got it, some roundhouse overalls, overalls on your, your recommendation. They're, they're great. great. I love mine. I'm not going to lie to you. I love mine. You've been wearing roundhouse, what, 20 years or so? Oh, probably pretty close, probably to, close 20. to 20 years because when I lived in central Mississippi uh, up at Louisville, uh, they had a roundhouse overall place up there. Uh, well, it wasn't just a roundhouse overall place. They had a, a, a warehouse of just... Well, you guy, people who like denim would go crazy in there. Uh, but I found them in there, and uh, I've been wearing them ever since. JT West said, Danny, I literally used a tablespoon to wring my onions. The best I've ever had. Thanks for the tip. Take you an old cheap butter knife, J uh, Joey. An aluminum one now. Don't get a, or a stainless one. Stainless. A stainless one, and bend that rascal. And make you something you can scoop around. It's got a handle on it. Then you can scoop around the money. It's real good. I mean, he it used works. used a spoon, same thing. But the, the knife you the, put the knife it, works really good. Just get a cheap one though. Don't get don't get your good ones. Don't get your wife's. She'll be no, on the case. No, no, no. Don't don't be messing with with um, Lino's silverware. She'd be <laughs> you'd be in the doghouse. It'd be worse than what you wanted. <laughs> go to go to the dollar store and get them two for a dollar. Yep. Crooked. She can't get on to you for that. Don't go get the good stuff out of the cabinet. Okay, Vicky says it's Parthenocarpic. There we go. Yeah. I, I knew Parthenow. it was par Parthenocarpic. <laughs> I don't know what you, how you say it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. One more rock. If y'all are not subscribed to Pecan Grove, y'all are missing, missing out. out. We're putting up a lot of stuff over there. We had fun today. I, we did a, a fun video showing a lot of stuff and yeah i hope i can e do it justice editing it was beautiful just beautiful. getting to see the see everything what we, what we shot today was beautiful um the the wind was on our side today the wind was perfect i couldn't ask for no better i just hope the camera picked up what we were seeing and uh i'll know tomorrow uh Rita Holcomb says, I'm growing the alphabet cucumbers. Will they make good pickles and relish? Yeah. yeah I, they're naturally crunchy to start with. You don't even have to make a pickle out of them. I mean, they should make really good pickles. Though. I mean, yeah. they really are. They did really good last year. They, that's the ones I like to, to eat, wasn't it? Because they were yeah. so crunchy. Yeah. Now, um, T-Bear says, if yet alpha cucumbers are a, par a parthenocarpic variety yes. in other words they don't need a pollinator but now the divas i tried them in my high tunnel because they are the same thing and they just didn't grow i don't know what what kind of issues we were having or whatever but they just didn't produce very many okay um, we've gone over our time here we got yeah um we um let me mention something on pecan grove um we've been trying out new what do you call them i uh Icon. What? Is it called an icon? The the little round thing that you see oh, on yeah, the Oh yeah, for our yeah for our, our channel. I think it's called an icon. I don't. It know is. It's an called. icon. Yeah. Um, I've tried out several, and I I've got one now that I think uh I don't know. Let me see if I can pull it up here and show y'all. I think I'm gonna like it best. Um, probably something we'll stay with for now. Um. The one thing about Pecan Grove, everything at Pecan Grove is PG. Yeah, the parents got to bring the kids. It's yeah. rated PG. Rated PG. 
Well, I thought I had it here, but obviously I don't. Oh, well, all you got to do is look at the bottom of the screen and you'll see it. Go to PG and, um, Pecan Grove and um, Avatar. Okay, it's called Avatar. I know the icon didn't sound right. Avatar. An avatar. That little thingy is called an avatar. It's a creature that's blue colored. I can't help what it <laughs> is. Anyways, I kind of like the new one that we've we've come up with, and uh, so I think we're gonna keep it. It it's um it's more visible, I guess, than what we had because all I had was black and white. And uh, people were not being able to find it because everybody had black and white and there was hardly any color. And uh, so I put a little bit of color in this one and maybe y'all can find it. Okay. Grams says, Danny, what is your apple cider mixture measurements you drink every morning? I take a full glass of water and put one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar in it. And then I sip. I don't drink it all at once. I sip on it. All through the morning. Oh, wait a minute. I'm trying to turn. Doing? I'm trying to do something. Just keep talking. Okay. Um, Mimsy's putting up the Pecan Grove uh, YouTube thing there. Let's see here. All right, I'm typing in so y'all can see it here. Will be cool. Said, did y'all get thunder earlier? Uh, will be. I don't know if we did or not. Um, I was taking a shower and then I had to, you know, I had to drive over here. So I mean, I I don't know if we did or not. Uh, Ron made it. He said at the end, at the end, but he made it. Let's see here. Avatar equals AI face. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I was thinking. Okay, I put it up. Now it looks like it's kind of yellow with a black, um, and it's got two bluebirds on it. Where'd you put it up? Right here. Oh, there it is. Okay. It's a light yellow looking color with two bluebirds on it. It's not as show up above. It doesn't show up as well as some things, but it shows up better than what we had. Do we use Redmond sea salt? Yes, yes we do. Every, Every day. day. It's great on apples. Yes. Um, you ever tried the Sumter cucumber? Yes, I've planted Sumter cucumbers before. Okay. All right, guys, we have got to we got to say our prayer. We got to jump. We got to get off of here. We yeah, put your prayer, prayer request up. Cause they, they've been putting them up. <laughs> okay, Miss Lippy and uh, Miss Allison ain't here to remind everybody. But uh, yeah. Mimsy's doing a good job tonight. Mimsy's done filling a fantastic in. job filling in. Y'all give her a hand. Uh, uh, glad to see Ron popped in. Yeah. Uh, hit the like button. See. See, y'all having to just fill in for our moderators, and I'm going to tell them y'all did a really, really good job filling in for them today. Yes. Okay, we're going we're gonna to have our prayer here because we're going to way over our time here. Father, we thank you so much for, uh, for being so kind to us tonight. We didn't have all of our moderators in here, but thank the Lord that we had uh, Prep for Eternity and Mimsy here. Father, they've done a fantastic job watching our back tonight, and we didn't really have any problems, so we're, we're blessed at that. And thank you. Thank you for that. And I pray that tonight we've been able to be a blessing to some people, Father. I, I, there's so many questions I'd love to answer, but just not enough time to do it all. And it is our desire to be a blessing to those that are around us. But even more than that, Father, it is a blessing of ours to lift people up before you. Uh, in the name of Christ, we pray for them, Father, diligently that uh, they could have healing for their bodies no matter what they're going through. Uh, what kind of physical ailments they're facing, what kind of mental illnesses they're facing, or even financial, Father. We do still have financial issues that we need to pray over, and uh, and, and, and sometimes spiritual issues, because right now we're dealing with some evil stuff in this world, and we pray for your guidance and your protection through all the things as we put our armor on daily to be able to deal with these things now. So these things we do pray tonight in the name of Christ. And Father, go with us through the night. Give us a good night's rest. And be with us through the upcoming days as our future is becoming even more uncertain as we live from day to day now. It's an exciting time to live in history, but it's also a, a time, if you don't know the Lord, it can be a frightening time to live in history. But Father, for those of you 
us who know you as our personal Savior, then for us, it's an exciting time because we know our homecoming is drawing nearer. So, Father, give us opportunity, give us wisdom, and give us understanding for the things that lie ahead of us now. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Mm -hmm. We want to thank uh, uh, Hills Mill and Mark Kreger, too. Yeah. They were in earlier. I know they yeah. probably are. They stay They're in the probably background. They're probably in the background, yeah. Unless Hills Mill well, lost, the weather, uh, was, lost weather was bad internet. Yeah. And Mark's in that area, too, I think. Somewhere. Uh, I don't know where Mark's. Yeah, he's, yeah. In, he's, he's in that general he's area. He's in that general vicinity, yeah. So, But they've done good. There's Fat Daddy's Outdoor Cooking. I see his videos off and on. Yep. See him okay. pop up. Okay. Um, you got a, a tip. They ain't said tip ain't yet, but somebody's fixing to say tip. It'll I be know Joe Mama. Joe them. Mama will say it. <laughs> you know she's going to be one of the first. There's Lou, just Lou. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. We are all God's soldiers. That is exactly right. <clears throat> waiting on them to catch up. Yeah, waiting on everything to catch up here. It's, it takes a while. I mean, we got about a 20 second delay here. Um, oh, I'd be Gutland. And would, Prairie Girl and Cowboy Homestead. Yeah. Uh, just Do Good. No, a lot. Nope. If, uh, you're the Nope that uh, won the flashlight, I'm guessing. The Nope is the one that said they got theirs today, I think. That's good, though. I'm glad. we're out. It, it blesses us to be able to help people. I mean... Oh, yeah, and we've got, look, we've let got. Me say this before we forget. Uh, not too many of you over here on Deep South Homestead have went over to Pecan Grove and, and subbed and stuff. But over there, we are giving away a Vigo bed, a six yep. in one, the new novel beds that I did a video on this week. And I'm going to be drawing somebody tomorrow and we'll put up a video tomorrow, uh, 22nd. Yeah. We'll put the video up on the 22nd. Who wins the new Vigo bed, the novel Vigo bed? It's a new design. Y'all, we like the new design, don't we? I like the new design. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, Sandra wants to know uh, what side of the plant do you put your copper coils on? They go on the south side of the plant, about two to three inches from the plant. I was going to see if I... Nope, says, yes, I received mine. Works great. Okay, let me see if I can do this and show them the. This is the new novel novel Vigo bed. I just got it. Got some plants put in it. And the other one is a square. I don't know if I got. Well, not square. What is it? It's a. What do it's you call a three it? three and a half by five. And so that's a six in one, and I made them two different ways. So that that's just an idea of how to do that. All right. You okay. Got, you got a um, tip. Mark says, "Did you get the weird magnets I sent you?" We haven't been to the post office, Mark, so I don't that's, know. I mean, I mean, uh, not Mark. Uh, Ron. Ron. I haven't been. We to haven't the post been to the office. post office, Ron. Um, we, we're we trying to not go anywhere that we don't have to go right now. we got to go into town Monday. Uh, guys, they, you know, I don't know about a tip tonight. Uh, what I will tell you is, those of you who've watched me for a long period of time know that I told y'all to keep your eyes on a place called Damascus in Syria. Uh, and I'm, I'm reiterating that again tonight. Keep your eyes on that. And keep your eyes, remember I told you keep your eyes on Israel. I told you keep your eyes on Syria. And a couple of other little countries over there I told you to keep your eyes on Iran. Well guys, we're at that time now where things have taken a new turn in the Middle East. And... It is a known fact inside the American system over here. I'm going to try to use words that maybe won't flag anything. 
inside our American system over here, especially the ones who's running it, that we are probably going to be struck at some point. Now, they've already located devices inside our software in everything that we have. If you have a washing machine in your house, if you have a stove in your house, if you have a refrigerator, a coffee pot that has a chip in it that came from the big sea country across the water over there. Doesn't necessarily have to be there. Doesn't necessarily have to be there. It can be from Indonesia, Taiwan, a lot of these places. They make all the chips for these things anyway. These chips are multi-layered chips. Now the outside of them are perfect, let's just say. But the inside of these chips, the some of them have six layers, some of them have eight layers in them. The inside parts of those chips have malfunctioning viruses in them that at any given time, all they have to do is notify that chip and it can shut down anything that it's running. So your washing machine can stop working, your refrigerator can stop working, your coffee pots can stop working, your car can stop working, your truck can stop working. If you've got a smart system installed in your house, it can stop, can working. stop working. The cell phones can stop working. Uh, all this stuff can stop working. And <laughs> My appliances are dumb. <laughs> uh, and guys, this is one of the very first ways we're probably going to be struck. Uh, the sad part about it is inside our power companies is these same chips also and they can shut the grid down at any moment they get ready to. Now, uh, I deal with some companies that uh, we know that there's IEDs inside some of the stuff that we've looked at and it's a little bit frightening because all they got to do is dial in these IEDs and they can shut down anything they want. And it simply means that they'll it'll start stop working. It just stops working. So it doesn't it, mean there's going to be a bomb or anything no. like that. It just means stuff's going to quit working. And if your phone quits working, if your internet goes down and doesn't work, if you have no electricity, if you can't uh, make coffee, if you can't make coffee, <laughs> I mean, if you can't keep your medicine cool, if you're on certain types of medicine, then what are you going to do? Have you thought that far? It doesn't necessarily mean that there won't be any power. No, but doesn't if, mean that. If you have a, a coffee pot that has a, a what it, what is it called, a um, screen, the little... The LCD screen. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a chip it's in it. It's got a chip in it. So if your coffee pot quits, do you have an old-timey coffee pot? I mean, something so simple can irritate you yeah. and ruin your whole day. Um, if you have um, your stove. Sure, you've got electricity coming into your house, but if it's got a monitor on it, yeah. like my electric stove does, it's. I tried to find the one that was at least not smart. Let, let me tell yeah. you something that's really scary, okay? I'm going to tell you something that will freak you out. Do you have OnStar? <laughs> does your car or your truck have a system on it like that? Because if it does, do you realize that when you're driving down the road, they can lock your front wheel brake up and make you have a wreck? Do you realize that? There is lots of accidents, it's single vehicle accidents out there, that is simply done because somebody somewhere locked the front wheel up on one of them vehicles or a back wheel and they brought it to a stop. They can switch the engine off. If you're just driving down the road, they can turn the motor off on it. I mean... Everybody looks at it like, well, if I break down, you know, OnStar, I can call someone. There is always a bad side to everything. OnStar is a good thing. OnStar has its good points. So, so is your refrigerator. Do you know your refrigerator? If someone was so a mind to, they could poison you with your own refrigerator. When you go to bed at night, they could turn it off if it's got a smart device in it. And they can leave it off all night long, and right before you get up, about an hour before you get up in the morning, after the food is sit there and started to spoil, they can turn it back on. Bacteria will continue to grow in 40 degree temperature like that. And then the next night they can turn it off again, and then they can turn it back on before you wake up. And over a period of doing that for several days, they can poison you with your own refrigerator, and you would have no clue. I mean, this is how AI 
technology can advance and, and can do things. These are not things, uh, the 911 systems this past week has already been, uh, and it's not that it's been hacked. If it had been hacked, it would have been all right. Could, you could deal with hackers. But the hardware inside these systems, these chips that I was talking about, is what's going down in these systems. The 911 systems, certain uh, EMC emergency systems, uh, I could keep going. There's, there's just tons of things that is already beginning to happen in this country and they know it is terrorism that's doing it. They're just not saying it. And you'll, if you'll notice, you're going to start to see, uh, well, it's not you're going to start to, they've been doing this for quite a while now. You're going to start seeing commercials asking you, are you prepared, especially after the big freeze in Texas and the big ice storms in the middle, middle part of the country. They start asking on TV, they start saying things like, are you prepared for the next ice storm? Are you prepared for this? Are you prepared for that? You're going to start seeing more and more of this. It's kind of an innuendo type way of letting people know that, uh, hey, uh, something might happen. And guys, the government is already calling in your local officials and warning them that things might begin to happen on a local scale. So, uh, Catherine Elkins has a good idea. She says she always puts an ice mm -hmm. cube in her freezer to know if it went off without knowledge. Because sometimes the power yes. will go off during the night and, and it then comes come back, back on. on. Yeah. And if you had an ice cube in there and you see it where it put where you put it and it's not there, but there's a puddle and it's refroze, yeah. you would know that the ice cube melted and refroze into a different configuration. Yeah. So that is an awesome thing to, to kind of have an idea on. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, there's lots of things. There's lots of things. Going on that if you guys don't know how to do a lot of things from the old school ways, yes. you're going to have to relearn them. Um, for, for years and years, I have been gathering up hand-operated things like our forefathers had. And it, 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 we, we use them periodically just to make sure that we know what we're doing and that we know how to use them. I mean, I have hand-operated just about anything you can imagine out there just simply because if that day comes... I don't want to panic because I don't have it. Yeah. Fuel is probably fixing to go sky high. If the things in the Middle East escalates any higher, fuel is going to go sky high. Because I don't know if you know it or not, Israel has first shot at the fuel after our military. Our military has first shot at our fuel. Israel has a second shot at our fuel. And then what's left goes to the public of the United States. Yeah. And not to just freak anybody out but just to be aware that things can happen yeah and just keep your eyes open on different things around it and it won't be you because sometimes people will say i don't know what's going on i've been through three coffee pots this week it might not be you right just, just know it might not be you it might not be you get you one i've got perp pots i've got the um pour pots like you set a cup down and put a Thing on top and pour through um, we've got freeze-dried coffee just in case um, you know lots of backups yeah. if you had to have something but that's just one one item that was just you know yeah. people can get irritated without their coffee just saying <laughs> I'd get irritated without a fan do you know let me give you a let me give you a scenario do you know that if something massive happens this country only has about 15 days of fuel to run on in storage. We have less than that of food to live on. Now that's a sobering thought to think that a country that used to have warehouses and underground facilities stocked with food to keep this country going is now at a point where we couldn't even keep our own self going for a month. And what was weird, we ran into town and um, I ran into Piggly Wiggly and Danny sat in the car 
And while I was in Piggly Wiggly, used to, you had bread aisles, like a whole aisle of bread. Yeah. Our Piggly Wiggly now has one little end cap counter and bread on one side, and I think the other side may have donuts or something. I can't remember what was on the other side. Usually chips. No, it was it was a small, it was not very big, like maybe, I don't even know if it was even 10 feet. And like three or four shelves on both sides. And that was all the bread. And I'm thinking, okay, have people gotten away from eating bread? Because back in the day when I shopped all the time, you had bread from the bottom to the top and all like yeah. 30 feet long or something. And people would clear that out in a heartbeat. And most of this was fully, I mean, there was bread everywhere. So I'm thinking, are are people just not eating bread? Or what's going on? Why was yeah. there just such a small amount? And uh, I don't know. Y'all might have, y'all shop. I don't. Uh, no, I, I, I agree with Donna. We have the fuel. It's not that we don't have the fuel over here. Our wells are capped off. The problem is we don't have the ability to process it. <laughs> That's the problem. We have it in a crude form here. We don't have the processing ability that we used to have. We don't have the... Uh, I get asked a lot of times, is this from China or is that from China? Guys, we don't even have a steel manufacturing company in this United States anymore. All of our steel factories have been sold out to foreign countries. We don't even make our own steel anymore. So you know what? To say something's made in America is almost impossible now, especially if it has metal in it. Almost anything you pick up in your house was made somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, very little. I mean, we have manufacturing here, but you pay for it when you buy something, just like Danny's overalls. Yeah. These things are $50 a pair, which all clothes have gone through the roof anyways. But to have them made in the U.S., $50 a pair. If I found some probably that were made overseas, I probably could get them for 25 a lot of people here are talking about honey and how it lasts forever. Be aware of the honey that you purchase. 90% of all honey sitting on shelves has been heated and is no longer the miracle thing that you think that it is and healthy that you think it is. It has been heated to 100 and, what is it, 120 or 130 degrees uh, and then allowed to cool back down. Uh, raw honey is very very hard to come by one and i are fortunate enough to know a gentleman who does his own honey and we can get it raw from him he does not heat his honey yeah, um, i have a, a stash and plan on getting some more <laughs> yeah and we've had several people that um have their own bees that don't heat their honey and they've given us honey throughout the years and so we've been blessed to have honey pretty much all the time but um what is what is the name on ours? It's um uh, the last name, the honey. Oh, it's a must have fun. Yeah. I can't remember his last name. I just know his honey when I see it. Yeah, uh, I've got um I, mean, I use it in my coffee. I'm trying to get away from yeah. all junk. I've been trying for a long time to just gradually keep cutting out junk, junk, junk. But I still have my little bitty snack stuff off and on, but. I'm trying to get better at some of yes. the things I do. Yeah, it's always better if you can, uh, you if you it's can. It's not pasteurized, yeah. Yeah, you buy your honey that's not been pasteurized because most all honey in stores now has been pasteurized. Yeah. All right, so we gotta go. Yes. <laughs> we we went sitting here. We don't went another half an hour. We gotta stop. Uh, we gotta. Um, Let's see here. Everything looks like everybody's still talking about talking about honey. Yeah, you can get. Just ask people when you buy honey if you're buying it local, and see because that's what we did. We asked and found out. Do you? Because yeah. a lot of it in the stores. Yeah. In the little cute bottles that look like bears and stuff, and you can get it a lot cheaper than the other stuff. Yeah. It usually has been. Something done Something's to, been done to it to make it that. Some cheap. Of, and actually, some honey actually has corn syrup added to it. So yeah, you have to be careful. You have to be very, very careful. Know your bee man. That's what me and Wanda always says. Know your bee man. All right. Thank you guys, Mimsy and Martin, uh, Hills Mill, and who else was in here? 
uh, Prep for Eternity for being um, moderators tonight and helping out. Yes, thank And thank you everybody all. for being good. Thank you, Earl Gray, for being good tonight. Um, no trolls. Yes, yes, yes. Keep your eyes on the Middle East, guys, because I'm going to tell you, things are heating up. There's lots of stuff starting to happen over there. Um, so be aware of that. And be aware that it's not only going to be in the Middle East. It's coming to America. And make sure you're ready when it gets here. Thank you, guys.